them which heard the word. This is the context, brother, where God works. A context where someone's speaking and someone's hearing. That's the context in which God works. Brother, you got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to you while someone was speaking the truth and you were hearing the truth. That's how it happened. Through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Acts eleven eighteen, When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance to life. The door of hope opened to you that God would favor you while someone was speaking a word. Speaking a word. And brethren, you know, when you hear the word, it glorifies God. Not hear it like it comes in the ear. Hear it like it sinks deep down in the ear. It's like the second hearing David talked about. This isn't casual hearing. This is the hearing of faith, and faith is anything but casual. Gentiles were fervent to hear. Paul said, this message is for you. And it's for you too, brethren. Hearing and speaking, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Do it. Hey, any good minister can say that. Any true minister can say that. You do what I've done. You carry out the things I've told you to do, and you'll prosper. And the God of peace shall be with you. Isn't that a marvelous promise? If you will hear the truth... The God of peace shall be with you. Anybody need peace today? Well, brethren, here. And the God of peace shall be with you. I'll tell you, the scriptures are so full of this. God wants us to know about this. Hearing and speaking. For this cause also we thank, we, we thank God without ceasing because when you receive the word which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men but as the word of truth, as, as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. That tells you hearing is the means by which the word gets into you. Yeah. And someone has to say it. Hearing and speaking. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 3. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard. Not only remember what you heard, but remember how you heard. How you heard. Later on in the book of Colossians, Paul's going to give the exhortation to the brethren to remember how they had received Christ in the first place. Because hmm? all false teaching takes you away from the first works. All of it does. It causes you to stop the first works. And it had done that for some in Thyatira. Jesus says to them, remember how you heard. Remember how fervently you heard. Remember how all-consuming the truth was in your heart when you heard it. Do you remember how your hearts burned within you? You remember those that said that on the road to Emmaus? Oh, how our hearts burned within us as he opened the scriptures along the way. Mm -hmm. You remember that, brother. Because how you hear will determine what you get how you hear. It is possible, and, I, and I, I have been guilty of this in the past, of hearing too casually. Of hearing too casually. You're not fervent about it. Brother Gimmon has said sometimes that people just don't stay in the truth long enough to receive, to continue until you get, to hear until you receive. Yeah. Be careful how you hear. Amen. How you hear. And hold fast and repent. If thou shalt not watch, I'll come to thee as a thief. So, Hearing is a critical matter. We must attend to both speaking, brethren, and hearing. Now, let me give you some marvelous examples of what happens when men speak and then when they, when they hear. Because this is, this is very important to see. In Job chapter 32, 18 to 20, <clears throat> we have this word. And we're going to take this up to a higher level. Because I understand what Elihu was saying here. But we can take it up to a higher level. <clears throat> I am full of matter. The spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as wine which hath no vent. It is ready to burst like new bottles. It would just, it was expanding in his heart. Expanding in his heart. I will speak that I may be refreshed. I will open my lips and answer. Now I know what Elihu is saying here. I know what he's saying here. Job, your counselors, they haven't been telling you what needs to be said. 
and I am anxious to tell you the truth in this matter. I'm anxious to diagnose your trouble, and, and relief in his case meant just being able to get it out. But we can take this up to a higher level. When we sit in the assembly and we're musing and our hearts are burning and the new wineskins of our hearts are expanding, we have to speak. And what happens when you speak? You get refreshment, but you're not the only one who gets refreshment. That well of water Jesus put in you, you can stop the well or you can open up the well. What Brother Anner said is true. Some of us are, are more quiet than others, and I happen to have been in that camp quite a bit until I started seeing the truth more clearly. And I still have that nature. There are certain places I'm, I'm quiet, but brethren, when the truth is burning in your heart, no matter who you are and how quiet you are, it is really hard to just keep that in. You don't want to let that just burn in your spirit like Jeremiah did. You want to let it out. Why? Because it refreshes you and it refreshes us. Well, I don't know if it will refresh the brethren. Did it refresh you? No. Well, yes, it refreshed. Then it's going to refresh us. Speak it. Speak it out. Because this is the kingdom, how it works. Speaking and hearing is the manner of the kingdom. We want to be refreshed. We want to be refreshed, brethren. At times, like Brother Gibbon had said this morning, we all find ourselves fatigued, not because we're doing something wrong, but because we're doing something right. We're fighting the good fight of faith. We're laying hold on eternal life. And you know what happens when you run? You get weary. And you need to be refurbished. You know what also happens when you run? You get really thirsty. Oh, water doesn't taste any better than after a good, strong, hard run. Tastes good. The things of God are sweet to people that are laboring in them. So, brother, and as little as you think your cup is, extend it forth to the brother in words. And we will give you this testimony. It refreshed my spirit. Speak on, brother, and speak on. How about maturity? Some people go on to maturity, and some people don't go on to maturity. What's the difference? Ephesians 4, 14 and 15 we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lay, they lay in wait to deceive. Do we wonder, brethren, when false teaching abounds while spiritual juvenility also abounds with it? Men are carried about and tossed to and fro. Why? It's because of what they're being told. Every wind of doctrine, it's like those fads that blow this way and then they blow in the other direction. No, it's this way. No, it's that way. And the new fad comes along. No, it's behind us. No, it's in front of us. And it blows them in all manner of directions. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> you will not remain in spiritual juvenility while you are giving your heart to the truth of the gospel. That will not happen. So if Paul sees Coloss moving in a different direction... He knows already they've been hearing something else. They need to hear the word of the truth of the gospel. And when we speak the truth in love, we grow up into him in all things. You have an opportunity, brethren, when you come into this place to give words that make it harder for the people of God to grow up or to give them words that make it easier for them to grow up. And one of the other, brethren. It's, it is one of the other. See, speaking and hearing, very important consideration. How about this? A Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well to take heed. That's a good way of looking at hearing. Take heed fervently. You're going to totally hear this. You're going to shut out other influences and completely give yourself to this. That's what take heed is. Taking heed. Until what? Until a light shines in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. Every time your understanding of truth has increased, it is because you've been hearing the truth. Just blank your mind and see what happens. Nothing. If nothing's in your mind, nothing's going to happen. That's just the way it is. You give yourself to the truth, take heed to it, hear it, the day dawns. The morning star rises. You know what it's like to walk in the night in the flesh. You can't see nothing. You stumble about. That's why they're stumbling about. Mm 